We are undergoing the most profound reassessment of the role of commerce in society in 150 years. The mid to late Victorian era was the last time we saw as significant a change. Indeed, it's one of the reasons many of the brands that we know and trust and love today, retail brands, consumer brands, were founded in that era, an urbanizing population detached from the ability to buy goods directly from producers, <coughs> needed brands, trustworthy intermediaries to help them trust the food. Sainsbury's, founded less than a mile from here, um, they put their name over the door, they said quality perfect, price is lower, and their business was born of milk adulteration scandals, uh, where milk had been adulterated with arsenic and was literally uh, killing people. So I think it is as profound as that. I'm not sure that there is much evidence that corporate behaviour has got materially worse in the last 5, 10, 15 years. These things tend to be progressive over time. But I think our ability to see it, to spot it, to hold it to our account, to have conversations about it as consumers are uh, greater than and it's ever been. And I think that there have been a number of very high profile instances where businesses have wrapped themselves in clothes, which turned out not to be true. And if you think about the current debate about uh, the users of our data, uh, it's very focused on the big uh, international, largely American tech companies, but this is true more widely of corporations using data. People thought the deal when they handed over their data, if they realized that indeed is what they were doing, was very different from what they're now discovering the deal to be. That's very untrustworthy behavior on the part of the corporations that acquired that data. It's been acquired under false pretenses, I would argue, and it's been used against, not with, and for the consumer. So I prefer to think as the challenge being corporations having to work with the consent and support of the society and the communities that they serve. And that's much more about trust than it is about fairness, although, of course, behaving fairly undoubtedly leads to trust. But the nature of competitive business will always lead to unfair outcomes for some people. When a corporation makes a decision to make a number of people redundant, that will feel incredibly unfair to the individuals involved. Yet for the survival of the corporation, the, the wider group of people that work within it, and the communities that that corporation serves, it might be the fairest decision, even though many of the people impacted by it won't feel that it was fair. And that's why I find the word sometimes quite unhelpful uh, in arriving uh, at the right decision. But I think that the change is profound, and I think that this conversation is incredibly important. And I don't recognise the idea that corporations exist to maximise profit. I think that in the long run, if you do that, you will not maximise profit, you, because you will lose the ability to act, either through the general consent of consumers or through legislation. Um, we've seen more corporate legislation in the last 10 to 15 years than in the previous 150 years. Now, if that doesn't tell you that the legislature, and the politicians have kind of worked out, the only people held in lower esteem than them are business people. So <laughs> picking on business people is not a bad thing to do if you're a politician and held in pretty low esteem as a starting point too. I mean, my sense is that you know, if, you, if you run a, uh, if you're CEO of a company like you were at Sainsbury's, then you are involved al almost explicitly in recognizing that there is a balance to be struck between the demands of investors uh, to maximize profit, but also your loyalty to your customers, your loyalty to your workers, the loyalty to the communities that you serve. I guess my question is that if you are merely an investor, you don't have that loyalty. Your focus is upon the returns upon, uh, on the money invested. And, and that's the tension that I'm trying to... That that's I'm true, sure. but in a public company, investors can buy and sell uh, the shares at, at almost no friction cost. And, of course, they can buy themselves to a position to have a view, um, whether it be through asking for a seat on the board or ultimately... Um, buying more than 50% of the company and therefore controlling and uh, directing it. You know, clearly, when you have a dispersed shareholder base, as we did in Saints, which is 120 or so thousand shareholders, uh, you're going to have you know, every view you could possibly have in the room. But that's where it comes back to communication and demonstrating that the decisions that you're taking are in the round for the well-being of the corporation. Uh, in, for, we announced our sponsorship of the Paralympics, um, heralded... I think largely with hindsight, as uh, an exceptional piece of corporate responsibility. Um, in 2009, 
for at least a year, if not longer, the only question I was ever asked by shareholders is why I was wasting the company's money on a flight of fancy. And the answer was because you don't understand our business, the colleagues that work in it and the customers that we serve and the communities of which we're part and the things that our customers are worried about. If you think being involved in sponsoring the Paralympics is a bad idea, you just don't. And we as the leadership of this organisation do and we profoundly believe it's the right thing for the business to be doing. Now, eventually, that view changed, but it changed largely only when evidence was available. And that's why, in the end, it can't be. You think about algorithms, I couldn't disagree more, because ultimately, the decisions today that have the biggest delta for corporations, more than has ever been true, are those that are taken where the numbers can't take it for you. Because if you only take the decisions that numbers take for you, then ultimately you must lose. You have to be prepared to take decisions that have a point of view. That's why purpose is important, because that's the definition of your point of view. And that's why values are important, because they are, if you like, the signposts in that decision-making, the ground on which you intend to tread, and also the ground on which you will not tread.